Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 10. We begin tonight with a Valley News Live investigation showing how stressful and threatening driving a city bus can be. Our investigation reveals the drivers may also be in danger when they get behind the wheel. Valley News team's Joshua Pagero obtained video showing Matt bus drivers being assaulted. Our investigation began January when we requested surveillance video from cameras on Matt buses that run in the metro. The purpose was to determine if any assaults occurred. It took several months, but the city of Fargo sent us three incidents caught on several cameras placed around buses. Last November 6, three passengers got into a dispute. The buses pulled over near CVS on 13th Avenue South. One passenger attacks a man and female Matt bus driver before leaving. Just two days later aboard another bus, two passengers in Moorhead between 15th Avenue North and 11th Street North refuse to pay and the male driver asks them to leave. One of the passengers punches the driver in the face on his way out the door. He immediately contacts dispatch. A month later on Christmas Eve, a passenger apparently wanting to get off pulls a cord alerting the driver to stop. He asks for the back door to open, but the driver explains the doors open at designated stops. That's when the driver gets whacked in the face. The passenger threatens to kill the driver as he gets off the bus. We got a mixed reaction from people at the Grand Transportation Center when we showed them the video. Some say they feel very safe on a map bus, while others say that there always tend to be a few individuals that like to stir up trouble on the bus. That's very disrespectful for the uh, bus drivers. Abraham Zosimo takes the bus nearly seven days a week and couldn't believe what he saw. I think that's really unfortunate, bad situation. Cool, I don't ever like ever have a problem with drivers, but you know, they can't really control who goes on the bus. Mark Bradshaw says he wouldn't hesitate to call 911 and defend himself if threatened. I'm not going to let nobody attack me on the bus. Although each incident clearly shows violence towards the drivers, they were handled differently in the eyes of the law depending on the evidence, and in one case, no report was filed. Matt Bus tells us they're committed to the safety of their drivers, and it's rare for assaults like this to happen. They say they're always looking to upgrade safety features on all vehicles for drivers. In Fargo, Joshua Piguero, Valley News Live. All bus drivers are contracted through First Transit. Authorities searched a new spot for evidence surrounding the four people who were killed inside RJR Maintenance and Management in Mandan on Monday. They spent the afternoon in a dirt parking lot at Dakota Speedway. That's less than a mile from the business where the bodies were discovered. Meanwhile, RJR employees were back at work today. Still no word on how the four people died. But there were three employees and the business's owner. Also, no word on a weapon that was used, and police are still searching for possible suspects. Police continue to say that there is no threat to the public. Bumps, cracks, and craters will be a thing of the past once the city of Fargo begins a reconstruction project on Main Avenue. But it's not just laying new concrete. They're making some major changes between 2nd Street and University Drive. This estimated $11.8 million project involves putting in all new streets, parking, sidewalks, and perhaps the biggest change, a roundabout at the intersection of 2nd Street South. It's just going to run more efficiently than a signal. With all the different movements, that, turning movements that happen there, it's going to run more efficiently with, this, with, a, with a roundabout. Before the reconstruction project begins, you may want to start thinking about alternate routes for day-to-day -day driving, with the major detour route being on NP Avenue. The start date for the project will be decided tomorrow. Stick with Valley News Live to hear those details. Some people in rural Cass County are battling floodwaters as we speak, and it's not the first or the second time but for the third time. Valley News Team's Callie Hubbard met with a man near Horace who saved his house in 97 and 2009 and is at it again. I was very concerned last night when the water got closer to the house and I didn't, I didn't exactly know what was going to happen overnight. Gordon Baker is one of the many residents that have their boots and equipment ready. It's not that bad. There's an inch of water in here. To battle the flood. Him and his wife moved to Horace in 1985 where they raised their two daughters. Sarah and Tracy, my wife Liz. In the year 1997, the first major flood hit their home. It was already up to the windows and running through the windows. We had actually three sump pumps going in the basement, just pumping water 24 hours a day. 
Him and his family fought the flood again in 09. Then that brings us to this year. They say the flooding is bad again, and as you can imagine, it hasn't been easy. You can't sleep because you're worried about what's going on outside. Gordon says he has to monitor his yard throughout the night in fear that the water will get closer. And get this, he even received a letter from the city saying he has to move because of the flooding. But Gordon says his house is just one of the many on this road that are going to be taken down due to the diversion project. I'm going to miss this place. My wife and I, we were only married five years when we, when we built this house and it's going to be, uh, it's going to be tough to move away. Gordon says moving away from Horace is like a double-edged sword. He's sad that he has to move away, but he's looking forward to not having to fight the flood anymore. Reporting in Horace, Callie Hubbard, Valley News Live. The Bakers are currently receiving help from the Cass County Sheriff's Department. If you are battling flood-related issues in your home, you can visit our website, valleynewslive.com, for more information on how to get help. Minnesota law enforcement aren't waiting for a hands-free bill to become law. They're going ahead with extra patrols to try and curb distracted driving. More than 300 law enforcement agencies will be part of the effort starting Monday. That'll run through the rest of the month. Law enforcement officers and troopers will be ticketing people who are caught using their phones while driving. A hands-free bill that would ban holding a cell phone while driving is currently in conference committee as Minnesota lawmakers try to come to an agreement on the terms. North Dakota senators are cracking down on the use of e-cigarettes among minors. A bill passed today creating a penalty for selling e-cigarettes liquid to minors. But it took a roundabout way to get there. The Senate originally approved amendments that would have made it a Class B misdemeanor to sell any kind of tobacco product to a minor, but it was later voted down. They did pass an amendment for a $500 penalty to any person selling e-liquid or the electronic device to minors. Supporters of recreational marijuana being approved in North Dakota are confident they have a proposal this time that will be approved. An attempt to get voters to say yes in November failed, and bills were defeated in the legislature calling for its approval. In an exclusive interview tonight on POV with Chris Berg, Legalize ND Chairman David Owen says he thinks 2020 may be the year. The common people did not feel that they were participating. They felt it was a bill written by activists. They felt that there were too many openings, too many potential loopholes. And as a result, they were unconfident. A public input meeting will be held tomorrow night starting at 7 o'clock to discuss the proposal on the campus of NDSU. It's a pretty hip plate, nice place to call home. Big changes are on the horizon for the Fargo High Rise. Three development groups have their eyes on the property, looking to tear it down and build a new mixed-used uh, development right in that spot. Valley News Team's Melanie Palmer has more on the tentative plans and talks with residents about the changes heading their way. How do you like living here? I love it. It's a very warm place to live. Blaze Gerblig has been living in the Fargo high rise for over two decades and he plans on staying here for a while. However, he might soon be in a brand new building just feet away from where he's standing. The, the site is the uh, former site of the Park East uh, apartment buildings. A number of proposals are being made to replace the low income apartment building and even add some commercial space on the main floor. These ideas come after officials say they're done working to repair the building. They pretty much have done enough analysis now to determine that it's not worth fixing. But Gerblich tells us he doesn't think the current building needs any fixing. The building's a clean building. The management takes care of it to the best of their ability. Everybody tries to keep it up. And he's not concerned about the move one bit. He says he'll be taken care of. They told us they would get us another place to stay and they would pay to have us move there, and uh, they would take care of us. As for the other residents living in the high rise, officials say they are gradually being moved out. In Fargo, Melanie Palmer, Valley News Live. Fargo's planning department will be sifting through the three proposals before bringing them to the city commission. The cost and general timeline of the project depends on the chosen proposal.